You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're recapping SmackDown Live from December 5th. Yeah. That, that's pretty much all I got to say. Yeah, it wasn't a very good show. No. Um, SmackDown <sighs> has this, I guess, I don't even know. Suck hole. Nah, I mean, it's just mediocre. Yeah. They, they, I don't know. It's just like every week it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. There's no, like venturing out they don't you change anything your low card your mid card and your main event mm-hmm. and it's always gonna be that same format throughout the night yeah at least on raw they move people around and stuff right yeah like you have elias facing roman and then you have him facing jason jordan right who, who technically really aren't on the same level mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's true so but yeah but let's uh let's get this Show on the road, huh? Yes. All right, so we open the show with uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn coming out. Mm-hmm. And, of course, since this is a storyline, it's everybody versus them. Them versus the world. It's true. Do you want to put it? The Can- Canadians have to stick together. Yep. So uh, they talk about how the McMahons have screwed over people in the past, mm-hmm. and now they're screwing over them. Yes. And, you know, they say that... I guess Randy Orton is kind of their go-to guy mm-hmm. for the McMahons. I guess they said what Stephanie had used him. Yeah, well, Stephanie was using him against Daniel Bryan. Right. Yes. And now Shane is using him against them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they said they outsmarted everybody last week. And then Sammy goes through. <laughs> the definition on, yes, of on, ringside. On ringside. And since he was... At the entrance ramp. Mm-hmm. Where not, he, not at ringside. Yes, where he attacked Randy Orton with the weakest chair shots mm-hmm. that he wasn't... Breaking the rules. Breaking the rules, exactly. Yeah. And it makes sense that those chair shots were so weak because he was pretty close, close to the audience. Oh, there yeah, yeah, where yeah. They were hanging over like when they replayed it uh, last night, mm-hmm. and I was watching. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense why they were so uh, weak. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> this is funny because he was going like, I'm in the ring. Mm-hmm. And he walks outside. This is ringside. Some of us in the business call this ringside. <laughs> so, that was that was the bright spot. Of it, it. it was funny for. Uh, it was very patronizing. It was good. Yeah. <clears throat> so then Shane McMahon comes out, and he says he doesn't have a personal vendetta against Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. But he did thank uh, Sami for his tutorial on uh, he, the definitions. Yes, he did. Right. <clears throat> and then. He makes a match for Clash of Champions. It's going to be Sammy and Kevin versus Randy Orton and a partner of his choosing. Mm-hmm. And then he makes a match tonight versus Sammy and Orton. Oh, wait, no. Orton came out from the crowd. Well, yeah, he was he was telling them that he, uh, Orton, that they were going to have the, the tag match. <laughs> no, before Shane came out, right? Didn't it happen? What? No, Orton came out after Shane. No, did. no, Shane came, Orton came out before he did. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. that's right. Right, because okay. Sammy that's was up at the up entrance the... ramp showing where he was when it happened, and, and then, then they, all of a sudden... They cut to the ring, right. and Orton... And Owens got the RKO, and then yeah. it was out, laying down and out. The only reason he sold I remember that RKO was really good. Well, yeah, because that led into the next segment yeah. after it. But anyway, so Shane comes, uh, comes out and says he's going to make the match the tag match for Clash Champions. Mm-hmm. And then he says, I'm going to make a match tonight. And then he looks at Sammy, and then he looks around him into the ring where Orton's standing, and Sammy's like, please, come on, don't do this. So he makes Sammy Zane versus Randy Orton, mm-hmm. and Kevin Owens will be handcuffed to the ring rope. Yes, he, he said that he's not banned from ringside. Mm-hmm. He insists that he be on yes. ring, at ringside. <clears throat> and then we go backstage, and Kevin Owens and Sammy Zane are complaining about what just happened. And Sammy had to explain to Kevin what was going on because he was knocked out yes. by the RKO. So he says that he's going to be, you know, Sammy says to Kevin that he's going to be handcuffed to the ring tonight. What? Why would he do that? Yeah. <laughs> and then Kevin Owens, you know what? I'm going to talk to Daniel Bryan about this. Get this reversed. And that was that. He's got pull. Yes. And uh, that brought us into the first match. Yes. Which was, I think, one of probably the... Technically, only match of the first hour. Um, yeah, it seems. Yeah, it's probably fair. Yeah. Um, we had Rusev, Rusev, Rusev Day. Day. Yes. Uh, Rusev <laughs> and Aiden English against the New Day. <clears throat> yep. Um, so it started with 
uh, in English singing the 12 days of Rusev day or no 12 days of Rusev 12 days of Rusev yes yeah <laughs> so he gets through the first two and then he's gonna start the third one mm-hmm. well actually the first one was what one Rusev day I, and I then the remember. second one was was two on the second day there was three new t-shirts or yeah something like something, that. something like that and apparently Rusev has a new Rusev day t-shirt well, which is kind of funny. Well, maybe it was on the second day. Or there were two Rusev. Well, they t-shirts. only got through two days, yeah. and I know he said three oh, okay. t-shirts. I don't know why. That's weird. All right, yeah. Cause I was just thinking. <laughs> I, about I that. found it strange when I was listening yeah, to fair it. Enough. So, um, and then on the third one, that's when uh, uh, the new day came out, mm-hmm. and they had giant pancakes. Yes. So dumping I, pancakes on children's faces. What? Where did this come from? Do we have any uh, idea? The only reason I thought it was happening was because the flapjacks <laughs> with the lumberjacks. That was yeah, it. Yeah. And, and then, then ever since then. Yeah. It. So it's really funny. That's it, true. But it, it and those are some big-ass pancakes. Yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but <laughs> whatever. <laughs> they had like three. I think Kofi was carrying one, Xavier was carrying one, and then there was one in the box Biggie had one in the box where he dumped it on a little kid's head. Yeah. And Xavier... Kofi launched <laughs> one into the crowd. Yeah. Uh, um, but anyway... This was a decent match. Um, yeah. Of course, this was one of the commercial matches. Mm-hmm. Well, you know. I'm going to bitch the, and complain. It, it was it, the it, only one that happened in the first hour, so there needs to be one. That's least. true. You do make a valid point. <sighs> yes. But uh, <laughs> surprisingly, Rusev and Aiden English got the win. Yes. That was definitely surprising. I guess they got, gave him a new t-shirt. They figured they should give him a win. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, I believe during the match, they had... <clears throat> Told, told us about how there's going to be a triple threat match for the tag team titles well, these, between... This was all released on social media, I think, last week. I know, I'm just saying yeah, yeah, they yeah. had mentioned mm-hmm. during the match. There's going to be a triple threat match, uh, triple threat between the Usos, the champions, against uh, Chad Gable and um, <clears throat> Shelton Benjamin, mm-hmm. and then um, the New Day, because the New Day decided that they wanted to be in the title picture after all, or something like that. That's what they said. Oh, they actually had a reason? Yeah, that's right. They... they just got thrown into yeah. it because they're the New Day. Um, so they announced that match. And then later on in the night, I know I'm skipping ahead a little bit. Yeah. They said um, Daniel Bryan and uh, Shane McMahon were so impressed with Rusev's, uh, or Rusev and Aiden English's victory that mm. they added them. And now it's a fatal four-way match. Yeah. With the stipulation that there's going to be four people in the ring at once. And they can only tag in their partners, which is actually very different from yeah. the normal tag team Fatal 4 but, match. I mean, while I'm fine that they added the stipulation, they didn't need to because this was going to be the best match on the card oh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But at least there is something to look forward to. Yeah, it's true. Granted, even if we got the Usos versus Benjamin and Gable, that still would have been a good match. Mm-hmm. Crazy how things have changed. Yeah. Um, they also had mentioned that <clears throat> the U.S. title match is going to be a triple threat match. Mm-hmm. So the U.S. title is going to be a triple threat, and the tag team, I'm like, they're all going to be triple threats? Yeah, yeah. Like, is the women's going to be a triple threat, too? You need to start throwing people in there. <clears throat> it's true. Uh, they but anyway. They certainly have the people to do it. Yeah. Um, so I think Rusev threw Biggie into the steps, right? I believe so. And then Kofi jumped over the top rope, hit Rusev on the outside, Kofi goes to, he throws Rusev into the ring. Mm-hmm. Kofi's on the apron. He goes to do a springboard, but Aiden English starts to get in the way. Kofi kicks English, gets distracted, goes for the springboard move. Rusev hits the ropes. Kofi falls down, hits him with, like, I think the spin kick, right? Some, the hit whatever his kick is. Trouble in paradise. No, 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 no. no. Rusev's kick. Oh, Rusev? No, yeah. it's just a back kick. It's just a back it. kick. Yeah. And that's how he picked up the victory. Which. Yeah, um, um, makes sense to me. Yeah. Well, Rusev especially, is good. So. Yes. <clears throat> especially if you're going to build, you know, I guess they got to build them up somehow. Well, that's true. Um, it seems like this is going to be a, an eventual building to nothing kind of thing. But, you well, know, I, I mean, at least he's showcased on TV. Rusev and Aiden English have definitely been getting over with the, the Rusev Day gimmick, so you might as well give them something to do. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's really... <clears throat> With the limited, uh, I guess, talent pool, you might as well make the most of what you got. Because, you know, Rusev really should be much higher on the card. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything that they've given him to do, he has excelled in. Mm-hmm. It's just either he got injured or, 
you know, his wife got in the way. <laughs> yeah. Something happened. Oh, well. Yep. <clears throat> All right. So up next, we have a backstage interview. I think it was Renee interviewing yes. Mojo. Yeah. Uh, she asks him uh, it, why or about his actions from yep. the week before. And this was another heel making good points. Yes. Because he said when uh, Ryder got injured that he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Me and Gronk celebrated. <laughs> yeah. And I was on a roll. Mm -hmm. And then Zach came back and we started losing again. Yep. And so, obviously, Zach is dead weight. Mm -hmm. It's just funny that he said that Gronk wasn't happy about what he did to Zach Ryder and then everything that's been going on with him in the NFL with his illegal hit, not illegal hit, or maybe it was, right? Uh, Didn't he have some sort of hit that was too aggressive? Honestly, they I said, Yeah, I think this, there was something going around about it. That's possible. Yeah. Those New England Patriots are a bunch of cheaters. Well, hey, <coughs> you have your own opinion. That's true. You know, <clears throat> everybody except for... Um, who is it? Uh, tell us his name. The coach of the Patriots. Mm -hmm. Bill Belichick. Ah, uh, yes. Everybody except for him and, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, Tom Brady thinks so. So it's gotta be true. There you go. <laughs> you heard it here. Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so then we get a cringeworthy backstage segment. It wasn't that bad except for that one part with Sarah looking. No, it was just. It just feels so forced. It it like it, again you, you have it you have to have each one of them talk. Yeah. Like, like like I don't understand why they have to go about it. I guess it like that's that. true. But um <clears throat> but it's uh the Carmella, Lana and Tamina mm -hmm. are backstage complaining that Natalia gets a title shot. They're no. complaining to Daniel Bryan, yes. I believe. Mm -hmm. um, Another title shot, which makes sense because she has even though each title match shot she has gotten there was some sort of screwy finish. Yeah. So she never got her official rematch. Yes. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, she's getting the title shot at Night of Champions. And yep. They're complaining. Clash of Champions. Clash of Champions. I don't care. <laughs> um, and then Dan O'Brien goes to Carmel. It's like, if you want, you can give me that briefcase and then right. you, you can, can yeah. be included in the match. She's like, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Well, she had a name for it. Frankie. Yes. Frankie mm -hmm. the briefcase. Yes. Because without Ellsworth, she needs... Oh, she did say she got rid of yeah, Ellsworth. Yeah, she rid the world <laughs> of James Ellsworth, <laughs> so she deserves the title shot. Yes. Which apparently he's starting to take bookings soon, I think. Oh, that makes yeah. sense. But I think it's funny that I know. he she claims that she killed him, <laughs> basically. Well, yeah. Um, so then, yeah, so they're complaining, and then the Riot Squad comes in. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I left that extra T off of the Riot Squad. Okay. <laughs> Just so dumb. Uh, so then they complain about not being in the title match. You know, we made such an impact, so on, so mm -hmm. forth. And then they're arguing back and forth, and Daniel Bryan gets really mad. And so he goes, stop! <laughs> and then he says that the title match at Clash of Champions is now going to be a lumberjack match. Which is really dumb. Yeah. it proves no point. Yes. The only thing is going to... It's just going to be a, uh, a catalyst to, I guess, get Ruby Riot into a feud with Charlotte yes or they're gonna do another okay the women's main feud's gonna be teams again <coughs> which yeah. is also possible they, they really don't know what they're doing because they don't know where they're going because right now say. technically they're two of the biggest names they have on smackdown aren't around yeah because becky's filming the movie and i don't know what naomi I was doing but thought she might i don't know something I, I know they were playing the injury, but yeah, I don't know so if, that means if she's anything not be actually for a while. Yeah, yeah, because they didn't mention anything about them being or her being in the lumberjack match yeah, at all. Was, they said specifically it was just going to be those six. six. Yeah. So obviously something's going to come out of this, but mm -hmm. I can't really see anything because you usually when you make a big stink about this, there has to be some kind of title, right? Implication or at least upper card implication. Yeah, I don't. Like, I don't know what you do they, next. They did the same thing with the Nexus. When uh, they came up, Wade Barrett was in a title match with John Cena. Mm -hmm. So um, even though, obviously, they're not going to go over, they want to make it seem like they're really a big deal. So I would imagine that that's what they're going to do. I know that's I probably going to be where it leads with Paige. <clears throat> I don't know. It's still weird in the choice of women that they brought up. I mean, Ru Ruby Riot's fine because she was yeah. hanging out in the main event picture and. And, NXT. and Sarah Logan 
minus she, her mic skills. No, she's decent. She's good in the she, ring. Yeah. Yeah. I was well. I was gonna say the the mic skills were obviously she's a little. Yeah. There, but I, that's her character. Is is that how she really is? Does she really talk like that? Do you have any oh, idea? I have no idea. Okay, probably not. Well, they, they impo- probably said here you're going to be a southern. That's character. that's that's the issue. I know. Because if she talks like that, like normally, yeah. it's one thing. Right. But if she has to play that up, it's horrible. Probably not, because I would assume they had interviewed all of the women during the. She was in the May Young Classic, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. if I was going to say, we could probably go back and yeah. look. I don't remember off the top of my head. Because that would be a shoot thing. Mm-hmm. But um, I would assume, probably not, because she was, what, she Tracy might, Mary she, Dobson, she, right? And, well, it doesn't mean she couldn't be Southern. No, 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 I know, but I mean, I don't I don't think it was like it, to that extent, anyway. Well, it, well, like I said, it could be she sounds like that, but doesn't talk like that, because there's a difference between playing it up and right. exaggerating completely. Sure. Um, but, yeah, she stumbled a lot on her words. She was saying a lot of strange, incoherent, hill, hillbilly-ish things. Which really sounds like them. But like I said, I think that's where they're going with yeah. their character. So that's not good. But the good news is if that they'll drop that eventually. Yeah, because where do you build from that? <laughs> exactly. There, there's nowhere to go mm-hmm. from there. So. It's, it's like the, the Bushwhackers. Not the Bushwhackers. The, the Godwins. The absolutely ridiculous hillbilly yeah, gimmick. Yeah. Didn't go anywhere. Not really. <laughs> um, all right, so go into the locker room. Baron Corbin, Bobby Roode, getting changed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Corbin comes up, and he's like, Bobby, what do you think about Ziggler being in our match? Man. I'm sorry, I just can't get into this. this is triple- no, I mean, I don't know. It, it just feels like they just threw it together again. Oh, absolutely. It would have been. It would have made more sense if it was just Rude and yeah. Corbin. But yeah, they're basically complaining that now their chances go down of winning because you add a third person into the match. Oh, math. 33 and a third. My fifty percent chance went to a thirty-three and a half. A thirty-three and a third percent chance. But you minus your twenty-five percent chance. <laughs> oh, Scott Steiner. Uh, yes. That thing is so funny. Oh yeah. So um, then Dolph enters into the picture and yes. he says, "Doesn't matter what your chances are in the match because I'm going to win." Mm-hmm. Because is that where he said that he was a two-time champion? Yeah, yeah and, and he ran mul- down all of his... Multi- multiple-time intercontinental U.S. Mm-hmm. title, cashed in his money in the bank. Yes, successfully. successfully he did take the shot at Baron, which yes. was good. It's true. He deserved it. But, like, I don't know. You just kind of throw Dolph by the wayside and then say, hey, you're going to be in this U.S. title match. Yep, very much. Well, well maybe they heard him complaining about the way that he's being booked. Well, yeah, yeah, he, he was not very happy about yeah. it. What was that on Talk Is Jericho? No, Edge and Christian's oh, podcast. Was? Yeah, okay. Jimmy Jacobs was on Talk Is Jericho, and uh, his was very good too, um, because he came up with the list and all things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, so yeah. it was good. But anyway, so um, what was I going to say now? Something about Dolph. Oh, yeah. oh, no, no, no. What I was going to say is the last triple threat match we had with the U.S. title, and you had inserted Ty Dillinger into it. At least it made sense because he was. Through the whole thing, this that. was okay. Ziggler had something with Rude, and now Corbin has something with Rude. So let's just put Ziggler in the match too. Uh, in in all fairness, there's still two weeks for them to build the story. So it's not like yeah, but why would you wait until now? Like I don't know. you know, I mean, why wouldn't Dolph campaign to be <clears throat> inserted in the match? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's just it just because you could have very easily had him on commentary without actually having him in the match right and that could have because he could still be going with his gimmick if he well i I, i'm glad they dropped that because that was bad um but if he was just on commentary Mm -hmm. and did exactly the same thing and and then got put into the match after that it would have made more sense right whatever so we have another Bludgeon Brothers match. Yes. They face two jobbers. Yeah. Two very small jobbers. Yes. Um, I, I think they're dead. All right. So I, I, I get the whole point of the squash match. Uh, but what's the point in having a squash match if you're not using your whole roster on the show? It's uh, a good question. Well, like, I get that they want to put him over, but, you know, put Ty Dillinger and someone else together. In all fairness. Put him and Sin Cara together. They did get... They did get used to to further a feud at first, and this was kind of just a filler kind of thing. Oh, oh, with the... Mojo and uh, 
rider. Oh, right, right, right. You know, that was fine. Yeah, yeah. but this, you're just wasting a spot. It's true. I, I don't know why they did that. And it's funny because they're building a team to do nothing. I think we talked about this already. Now they're fifth in line. Yeah. Because they're... Or cer- fourth in line, technically. Yeah. Because <clears throat> that, that SmackDown, it's the only good thing going yeah. on in the on SmackDown is the tag division. And Raw has no tag team. We haven't seen the club in weeks. Besides those... The uh, shop commercials. Yeah. So it's crazy. And uh, and they, they don't really care either. That's the strange part. All right. So I left out in the notes here, but... Neither AJ nor Jinder was on the show. They played a promo for their match yes. at Clash of Champions. Mm-hmm. Why are you not using AJ like you're using Roman on Raw? Just have him at least be there. It's true. Bring Gallows and Anderson over. Put them together. Oh, man, that'd just, be great. Why, like, you're just letting things waste away. Yeah, it's true. I, like, I, I would honestly, if if I had the choice between going to Raw and going to SmackDown, it would just be a no-brainer. Yeah, now it'd be Raw, yeah. yeah. I, I, I at at first dude like last year or right like because when we went to that raw mm-hmm. that was at the point in time where we kind of like smackdown better right <clears throat> and then the superstar shakeup happened and smackdown went down the drain mm-hmm. i mean maybe jinder and aj had a dark match after 205 live that's uh, possible that's possible but i i think that there's a chance that they just went to india yeah. early to do press and stuff yeah, that'd be my possible. guess because they had i think it was well, they Thursday, tape, Thursday, Friday, they Saturday. Tape tribute to the troops. Was that yeah today? That's next they, week. No, they taped it though this week. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Or they? Are you sure they already taped it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they taped it. When would they have done that though? I think they might have taped it today. Okay, I was yeah, gonna say they thinking. couldn't have done it. Where do they usually tape that from? I don't know. Yeah, but I I, I figured that they were already going to the other side of the. Yeah. Because, what, December 9th? Maybe they're doing it tomorrow. I don't know. Because I think they have dates Friday, Saturday. Yeah, well, the 9th, I believe, is the India show with Triple H for Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure they have dates over there Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Maybe Thursday is when they're taping it. Yeah. Or they're doing it tonight, and they went over this morning or whatever. Yeah. Which sucks. Tonight is Wednesday for you. Yes. Um... But anyway, let's just keep moving on yeah. with the show. It's just no more speculation, up. especially no. things that we could just very easily look up. Yeah. Um, so we had a backstage segment with Sammy and Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. Owens apparently spoke to Daniel Bryan, and he said he'd think about his appeal. <laughs> that was it. That that part's pretty funny, because he's like waiting for approval, mm-hmm. and it's it's just stuff you usually don't see. Yeah. Um, so that brings us to the. Baron Corbin and Bobby Roode match. Yes. And Dolph Ziggler was on commentary. Mm-hmm. So what did we get? A couple minutes of this match? Yeah. And then Ziggler goes, I got to check something out. Yeah. And then he goes into the ring and hits zigzags on first Corbin. Yep. And then on, no, first on Roode. Yeah. And, and then, then on Corbin. Corbin. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that was it. That, that was it. So, like I said, had that happened the other way around where he wasn't inserted into the match. Right. Until after that happened, it would make more sense. You go... And you have now Daniel Bryan or Shane go, you know what? Let's make this a triple threat match. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So we go backstage again. And I guess Carmella, Tamina, and Lana were there. And Natalia came up, I guess. And she said that she was going to be excited that they will be at ringside mm-hmm. for, I guess, our match the at, one at Clash, the, of Clash of Champions. Yes. yes. And Natalia wants to know if they'll, if have, they'll have her back. Mm-hmm. And they say, you know, if Charlotte gets thrown out of the ring, you can attack her mm-hmm. and then throw her back in. But if I get thrown out of the ring, I want you to go and attack the Riot Squad instead of me. To protect me. Yes. And then the Riot Squad shows up, and then Natalia sucks up to them and mm-hmm. saying that they did such a great thing last week or two weeks ago when they came in and beat up Becky Lynch and Naomi, and then last week they beat up Charlotte, right? Yes. Yeah. So. Well, last week they they when they had that tag match. Right. Yeah. And the, what was it? Charlotte got taken out. Well, she was by herself, and Naomi got taken out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, because Natalia left ringside. Yes, yeah. she, she ran away. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, at least they're building it, but it's just... 
I, it takes it, away because the same things, not the same things happening. It, it's on pretty Raw, much the same thing. It's more or less the same thing. The only difference is that there's kind of more obvious teams. They're not utilizing them on SmackDown like they are on Raw. Oh yeah, well there's it's less. I mean, granted, Page and Ruby Riot are totally different. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not as big of a statement on yeah. SmackDown as it is on Raw. Mm-hmm. So we get Tamina versus Charlotte, mm-hmm. and. Carmella, Lana, and Natalia are ringside. Yeah, surrounding the ring. Yes. Um, not really a surprise here. Mm-hmm. This was, I think, the second commercial match, which they do it twice in the night. Yes. And the main event is not Well, yeah, included. they, they wouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Charlotte wins with the figure. I think it was a figure four, right? Or did she I, go into the figure eight? eight when she Sometimes wins. she wins with the, just the figure four. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was a relatively short match. Yeah. Uh, Natalia gets on the mic after the match, and then she basically says that she's going to win her title back at Clash of Champions. Mm -hmm. Riot Squad comes out. They say they have a preview of what's going to happen at Clash of Champions. They all talk again. Yep. They all brawl outside the ring, and then Tamina and... Was it Ruby Riot? One of them. They were held back by their other team. It was Logan. Was it Logan? Okay, I guess that makes more sense. Because the two of them kind of started fighting, Mm -hmm. and then... Yeah. They all ripped each other off, and then that was kind of like an awkward end to the... Yeah, it was weird. Yep. It's, you just have no idea where they're going with this. No, and it feels like the whole welcoming committee <laughs> That's funny, because they mentioned again. that earlier. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, well we, we, to, we yeah. had the welcoming committee, yeah. and now they're the riot squad. Yeah. Tally is such a cat lady. <laughs> she really is. Oh, you haven't watched any of the new Total Divas, no, right? No, not yet. I, I'm assuming it's a more of the same cat lady stuff. No, it was between her and Lana and Lana. Not yet. Uh-huh. Just very strong personalities getting in the way of each other. It was pretty good. Fair enough. So. All right. Um, up, yeah. Up next, we have uh, Kevin and Sammy mm-hmm. with uh, Daniel Bryan in the back. Yep. Daniel Bryan says that he thought about his appeal. And then uh, security comes up and uh, puts handcuffs on. Kevin yeah, he kind of just holds them, holds them up. Says, we got the handcuffs. So that was basically Daniel Bryan's decision. Yes, he was okay with chains apparently. Mm-hmm. And they cut back from commercial, and the three of them are out at ringside, and Daniel Bryan's yelling <clears> at him <throat> and saying that if you don't do this, you're gonna be suspended. Yep. He's like, "Why? It's not fair." <laughs> and then. Uh, and he's like, you got to do it, Kevin. Mm-hmm. And finally, he, I guess, agrees or just kind of gives in. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, we have the main event. Yeah. So I only saw about a quarter of this match mm-hmm. because my cable decided to stop working. Actually, it's just the USA Network. Yeah. Every other channel worked, but the USA Network. Yeah. Um, you didn't miss a whole lot. It no. Wasn't, it wasn't very interesting. But when Sammy got dropped on his back on that monitor, was, he had a nasty bruise on his back already. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a rough spot because he landed on the actual like yep. the, the computer monitor. Middle of the back. The whole monitor broke. You can see, yeah, it fell right ap- apart. You can see the, the circuit board and then the screen. <laughs> two crazy. pieces. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that happened. And then pretty much, I think it's uh, Sammy Zane uh, goes underneath the ring, grabs... Mm-hmm. Uh, bolt cutters yep um kyota takes them from him and then he just kicks them towards owens unintentionally <laughs> i guess um owens grabs him he's finally able to cut off the the handcuffs Owens should have like a fishing pole he's trying to get it out of uh, kyota's <laughs> that, pocket that would have been funny um and then he he all those big bolt cutters he couldn't put it in his pocket no no, no. he had the key in his pocket oh, trying oh, to fish oh, the key oh, out okay. of his pocket yeah, yeah, yeah. um <laughs> Paul Cutters. That would have been funny, though. <laughs> um, and then he tries to get involved. Randy Orton fights him off. Um, at one point, Owens distracts Orton. Sami Zayn goes for the roll-up. Um, Orton kicks out. Orton then goes for the roll-up. Oh, no, he goes for an RKO. Mm-hmm. Um, Sammy dodges it. And then Owen, uh, Orton goes for the roll-up and pins him. That's how it ended? That's how it ended. <laughs> all right and then uh pretty much right after the match kevin owens and Sami Zayn start attacking orton mm-hmm. and then shinsuke's music hits shinsuke comes down uh they get the upper hand shinsuke hits a uh a Shin- kinshasa on owens 
Then Orton hits an RKO on um, Zane. On Zane. They, they celebrate. And then like, nope, one more. So I guess Kevin Owens gets up. He gets an RKO. And then shakes. they still had time left is what you yeah, said. Basically. <laughs> um, so and then they cut back or yeah, they cut backstage. Mm hmm. And it was Kevin, uh, not Kevin, uh, Sammy Zane, Daniel no, Bryan, and Daniel Bryan <laughs> and Shane McMahon. I'm very tired. Um, backstage, and they're looking at the screen, and Shane McMahon goes, "You know what? At the match of Clash Champions, I'm going to be the special guest referee. And if Sammy and Kevin lose, they're they're fired, and not just from SmackDown Live, but from WWE entirely. And he just walks away, and then uh, Daniel Bryan's like, "Oh." So the only payoff that could possibly come from this is that Daniel Bryan gets back in the ring. That's the only positive thing that you could well, have. But what do you mean in the ring? Well, apparently he's refereeing a dark match. Uh huh. So he is getting, you know, involved more. Yeah. So I don't well, know. What does that have to do with this feud, though? Well, I mean, or Daniel Bryan, I guess, turning heel? No, but you already talked about this. Shane's going to turn heel. But he is heel. They're the bad guys. Exactly. It doesn't make any sense. So it doesn't matter. It's just going to be a more active confrontation. We're going to end up getting Daniel Bryan versus Shane McMahon at WrestleMania. No, we're not. Daniel Bryan's not going to wrestle in WWE ever again. And if it's if it, if he does, that's going to be the match. It's not going to be the match. All right. If he does, it's going to be a much different. It's going to be a big match if he does. I don't know. Why not? So they probably would want to put him in a safer match. Uh, you really think that Shane's safer than like AJ? N- in a, I don't know. Not man. even close. No, no I not don't mean. I don't even close. mean like that. But he's not going to be as physical and not going to. He could be safe and be in a good wrestling match. Yeah. Whereas with Shane, he could screw up and he could really hurt him. I guess that's true. So, I don't know. I don't. I don't see how there's going to be good coming from this. I I, I think it's just going to be another authority storyline that. But the authority is supposed a... to be the good guys. No, it, no. Not... My my point is that it's going to be another storyline that doesn't end in a match it just ends in more storylines because that's how this one has been going with owens and shane right yeah there was never a nothing's come from anything yeah so it's never gonna it's not gonna come to a point it's just gonna keep on going and then it'll just stop that's terrible it's true but you know it's smackdown and do you have the good guys or the bad guys Mm -hmm. the bad guys are the good guys yep I know I'm on team uh, Kevin and Sammy. I don't think there's a choice. Yeah, it's true. Can't really get behind Shane. He's just being a jerk. Yeah, and Randy Orton's terrible as a face. Yeah, he just doesn't care. I mean... It's, I mean, it's not that he's bad. It's just he's not a good... Oh, no, his story... It's boring. Yeah. <clears throat> the man's portrayed as a viper. I don't see yeah, that he's, being he's, a... He's definitely got a character for a bad guy. And he obviously likes to play the bad guy character because he it excels... Is a lot, it is a lot easier. Oh, absolutely. A lot easier to be a jerk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where does Shinsuke fit in with this? It just he doesn't. Oh yeah, we got this guy on the roster that was highly acclaimed, and we he had went, else jumped through do. all hoops to bring him to NXT, and then we brought him up, and now he's not doing anything. I guess we should put him in this match. Yep. It was he had nothing else to do. That's why he's in this match. Yep. Which is a shame. Yep. Oh well. Yeah. So uh, sorry, our review wasn't very good well if the product isn't good or the <laughs> review can't be good that's true but a lot of people did find it they did like the show it wasn't good though i realized that all right anyway that was our smackdown review if you liked what you saw here please like share and subscribe bye bye